my goodness! Holy sh! Well, the Bronco and Ralphie are back from the exhaust shop. Let's take a look. I told Steve, my exhaust guy, that I wanted it to sound distinctly V8, but I did not want it to be loud. I'd rather it be quiet, but there's not a lot of room in there on the driver's side because of where the transfer case hangs down. But uh, I think he knocked it out of the park. Got exactly what I asked for. I told him I didn't care what kind of mufflers. Just try to make it quiet, but if it wasn't quiet, so be it. I wanted it to come out in front of the rear tires because I don't know later on I might try to build my own fuel tank back there and with the three inch body lift yeah I should be able to make my own with some extra capacity I didn't want the exhaust to be in my way while I was trying to do that sorry about the wind the wind's terrible out here today anyway yeah the, the driver's side hangs down a little bit but I'm not too concerned with it because this was not intended to be a hardcore wheeler it might do a little bit of light wheeling but I'll show you what it sounds like So if you watched my Jefferson swap meet video, you saw that I bought this hood here, fiberglass Bronco hood, and then I pointed out I already had two of them that I have previously purchased. I think it's time I started using them. Uh, I'm thinking one of the white ones, these, these two white ones are the same hood. That one has a few cracks and damage in it, and as you can see, the vents aren't cut out. I think one of the white ones is going to look better on there, you know, without putting any paint on it in contrast to the black paint. But uh, we'll see. We'll put them on there and take a look. All right, here's the one I got at Jefferson. Uh, it's not fitting quite down that good, but I could fix it because the uh, hood stops are right in here where the hood pins were. I suppose uh, when this was used before, the uh, hood pin was also set up to be work as the stop as well. I like it. I like it. Let's try the blue one next. Yeah, I like the blue one as well. It, uh, I don't know why it's bulging up here. This seems to be the, the most heavy duty of the three hoods. Not probably gonna make much of a difference, but I'll throw the white one on there without the vents cut out. I'm kind of leaning towards going with this one, mostly because this is going to sit outside and I don't want those vent holes letting rain in on the distributor because it's pretty much right there in the area underneath the distributor for the most part it's a little bit forward of it but still uh, biggest problem yeah this one still has the fitment issues as the other two right here so it must be something to do with the Bronco itself so as far as getting this radiator and cooling system in uh, it kind of turned into a deal like if you watched the last video with the power steering pump um, I had a bunch of stuff filmed, but I changed directions on it so many times that it just turned into a confusing, boring mess. And you'll have that when you're doing fabrication on something you've never done before. You'll get started on it, and it won't work out quite the way you thought it would, or you think you see a better way to do it, or whatnot, and you change directions several times. And that's exactly the way it was with this radiator. But, uh... Let me show you what I got done here and maybe explain the what's and the why's of it. It's not quite done yet, but it's finalized as far as what's going to happen. This radiator, I believe, came from a 97 Ranger, 4 liter, and it's got the uh, double thickness core. Um, as you can see here, I already got started doing it one way and then changed direction. Man, it almost looks like it's all meant to work in there. The shroud is also from the 4 liter V6 Ranger. I grabbed that at the junkyard as well. The upper hose is 5 liter Explorer. 
and I did have to change the water neck to the five liter Explorer to get it stick it straight up instead of that the angled ones that the small blocks usually have. And like I said, it I can't say it enough. It's just like it was meant to be. Um, the lower hose, the five liter Explorer hose would have worked, but it was so long that it was kind of you know crammed into there. So I just kind of made this one. Uh, the upper part of it is the five liter V8 hose. And the lower is just some random hose from my uh, stash out in the shed that had the right angle to it. As you can see, I've got hoses all over the place here. I was trying to make work, but that was just the simplest way to get it in there. The fan, that is also from a 5 liter V8 Explorer. I've had it running, but I couldn't run it for very long because I didn't have any coolant in it. It wasn't completed. It's pretty much all set up now except... And this is the one bad thing about this setup. Everything else has worked fabulously well except for this. In order to get the radiator down low enough to get the, the fan centered in the shroud, the actual factory mount here on the radiator that comes off the side is basically touching the power steering box. So there's no room in there to make a mount to mount it to the radiator support just like the upper is. Uh, there's on the passenger side there's room i can't really get in there and show you what i have done is i've made this cross member that i'm going to weld to the frame let's see like even yeah put some fancy speed holes in it it's going to weld to the frame like that and support the radiator from the bottom now the problem with this is i'm supporting the radiator using the frame and then the top of the radiator is attached to the radiator support and there's going to be vibration there. Um, there will be a 3 8 rubber pad on this. And there's also these rubber isolators here. Um, so hopefully any vibration between the frame and the bodywork will be absorbed by those rubber pads and isolators. Um, since I fixed the rust issue right here with this body mount and these new polyurethane body mounts that I've put in, this thing, it's pretty much rock solid anyway. I can grab the grill and... I end up just picking up the whole vehicle. Hopefully this will work. Uh, time will tell. It's one of those things you're just going to have to try it and see. This setup, it, the reason it works so well is because of the three inch body lift. Because this radiator is fairly tall and narrow. And it needed to be narrow to fit between the frame. But if someone was going to try this without the body lift, it could still work. But you would have to completely cut this mount off here. Maybe the other one. But it would also leave the radiator sticking way below the frame. Yeah, picture this three inches lower. It would be, yeah, I don't know, sticking underneath the frame. Inch, inch and a half, maybe. As anyway, uh, like I always say, I'm running my yapper too much. Time to shut up and get to work. I just got to weld in that bottom cross member that's going to hold the radiator up. Put some uh, antifreeze in it, see what I got for leaks. Well, it's all in there for good now. Um, I was kind of thinking, yeah, if for some reason this does shake itself apart due to differences in vibration between the frame and the body, um, yeah, I'll go get another junkyard radiator, put it in there the same way, except instead of bolting it up here, maybe just find a way to capture it, to hold it basically hold it loosely up against the uh, radiator support but yet it would still be able to vibrate up and down more than what's in here but i'm i'm kind of thinking it'll be okay i'm thinking the only way this thing's ever going to get ripped apart is if it's in an accident or crash of some sort but uh, like i said time's going to tell uh, well i got it pulled in here in the shop out of the breeze doing some welding i still need to do my uh, hood pins for this fiberglass hood so i'll get to doing that uh, while I'm doing that, I'll start putting some coolant in it. I did go ahead with the thermostat and drill that a little hole in it, so it'll hopefully let the air out, although I foresee there being air trapped in this radiator hose, but that must not be a big issue because that's how these uh, 5 liter V8s are set up, so we'll see how that goes. But uh... Well, putting the hood down and marking it, Looking like, yeah, I need to drill a hole right there. I'd rather have something a little more 
the size hole I'm going to need, it's just going to barely be on it. And this one over here is only halfway up there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a little section out and weld a piece of angle iron in there on each side. I am still going to leave the old hood pin locations in just in case this fiberglass hood isn't up to the task and it just kind of vibration and destroys itself, I can go back to the steel hood. Well, you guys know the story. I'm out of time for today. Got to go inside and get ready for work. Uh, I did get the coolant filled up. Seems to be all it'll take for now. But it uh, doesn't seem to be any leaks. Those right there, I do have a couple of leaks on my uh, power steering pump where I welded those fittings onto it. So, yeah, over sometime I might have to take it off, clean it all up, see if I can't seal it up somehow. Well, it's actually a couple days later. Uh, I was busy doing other stuff. Got out here today, fired it up, let her warm up, see how she does. While it's warming up, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it to work. In working on my various projects, I always uh, accumulate this pile of stuff that I don't use or whatever, but it all needs to go back out to various places in my parts storage. So I'll pile that all in the back of the Bronco while it's warming up. up to 180 already a little bit more than that the thermostat that was in it was a 180 so it's it warmed up pretty damn quick i have to say uh no vapor blowing out of the tailpipes so maybe my head gaskets are good moving lots of air but the radiator hose is pressurized It's warm, so it's moving the coolant. This side's not warm at all. The tank here is starting to get warm. So. It's up to 190 now. I don't even have all my stuff loaded yet. Everything's still looking good, no leaks. Now this tank's starting to get a little warm. The hose down here on the bottom isn't warm. And the only place the tank is warm is up at the top. So I'm assuming it's flowing. Now this tank's definitely warm. The hose is definitely pressurized. So I think we're good for leaks. Maybe the gauge is just off 10 degrees. Oh, still climbing a little bit. Creeping up there, getting close to 200. My old pressure, now that it's warmed up, has dropped to what, 26, 28? That's fine, small block forge don't need much oil pressure. It's actually dropping back down a little. Thermostat must have just opened up or something. I can actually see it dropping. Back down to 190. Let's go up front, check things out. What's going on? Now that hose is getting a little warm. The bottom tank's warm. You can actually feel the airflow getting pulled through here. Not a lot, but you can feel it. Find a piece of paper or something, see what it actually is doing. Oh yeah, it's pulling air. Not a problem there. 
said, plenty of airflow. Blowing lots of hot air out there. Hold the 190 now. Everything's loaded up. Still holding at 190, pretty much, a little bit more, I guess. No leaks, no kabooms. Well, I'm gonna run this crap down to the shed. Then maybe we'll go for a little spin. I'm gonna leave this thing running. Whoa, jumped up to almost the 200 again. I'm gonna leave this thing running while I unload with the hood down, see what things do. It took me about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes to unload all this crap and put it away. And it sat right there, about 195 the whole time. Uh, I got a few things I gotta run up uh, into the field to put away. So let's see how that goes. One last stop. Somewhere in the magic parts bus. Temperature still good. Scrawly these things are, there's no weight in the back. <laughs> yeah, that's how I rolled one once doing that. <laughs>
100, so that's kind of good. Horsing around with it like that, it seems to be staying cool. Starts back up pretty good. I don't know why it was just kind of laying down on me out there. Act like it was running out of fuel. Um, thought occurs to me. I never have messed with the timing other than, yeah, when I first got it running. So maybe I need to check that out. So now that I've got this thing drivable, I've been putzing around with it, doing a little tuning and whatnot on it. And yeah, going down a gravel road, not surprisingly, this thing is just a dust cloud inside because of all this rust this driver's side is way worse than the passenger but the passenger side is still pretty bad now what I could do is go buy a bunch of uh, reproduction sheet metal and you know take the time and carefully put all that in but uh, if you've been watching my channel very long you know that yeah I'm not gonna go that route I'm too cheap for that that stuff costs money and I don't have the patience for that kind of body work I wish I did but I do not yeah, with that in mind, there's a little story here. Uh, another YouTuber here in Iowa, uh, This Week with Cars, his uh, name is Steve. I ran across him at a car show, what was that, late spring, early summer. He had a uh, Sunbeam Tiger there, it was an all Ford car show. And he said, was telling me his dad had a, I think, 65 or 66 Mustang there at the show. And we were talking, his dad comes walking up and he introduces me to his dad. And, it's like, oh, Ron has a YouTube channel as well where he, uh, and he kind of hum hawed around a little bit and he finally just spit it out what he wanted to say. Ron builds vehicles out of junk. <laughs> and I was like, I wasn't insulted by it, but I was kind of surprised. Like, is that how people really see my stuff? But I could understand how people would. I, I don't mind at all reusing used parts, used steel and whatnot. Uh, I'm just going to take that as a compliment that uh, I reuse stuff and make something useful out of it. So thanks, Steve. But uh, anyway, I've gathered up an assemblage of used heavy gauge sheet metal that I'm going to use. You can get this old auxiliary gas tank I bought years ago and it wouldn't fit in the truck. I was going to use it. I don't see how anybody could afford to fill that monster anyway. But yeah, all sorts of old sheet metal here. Cat not included. The plan at first I thought I was just going to kind of cut this stuff out and patch it up, but I think what I'm really going to do, I'm just going to cut all of that out of there. I'll, I'll leave most of this wheel well, but obviously cut it. But uh, Once I cut it all out, I'm just going to work from this flange here and just box it all in right there like that. Um, I wouldn't actually have to cut all this out to do that, but uh, I'm not planning on this being a hardcore wheeler, but it might go out and get played in the mud a little bit. So if I get all this cut out of here, that's less places for mud to get packed in. Uh, yeah, with it all gone, it'll either mud will either fall back out or be easier to wash out. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to get to work. You know, it just occurred to me about that comment about Ron builds vehicles out of junk. Maybe the guy meant that I start out with vehicles that are junk. Either way, it's still the same. I'm taking something that other people consider unusable junk and making something useful out of it. Got some protection there so I'm not throwing sparks against my seats and more importantly, the windshield. Because over the years I've found that out the hard way. You don't throw sparks against glass because it makes it, it pits it. Those sparks, they just instantly melt into it. And I can already feel I've got a couple pits in there. Maybe they were already there or maybe I did that. I think you were getting the idea. I didn't need to show you me cutting this whole thing out, but uh, here's the back part out. I cleaned this flange off here. Like I said, I don't want to give any more places for mud to grab onto than I have to, but uh, I wanted to take this flange off because it's already rusted out right here in the middle, but I decided to leave it because it is holding the quarter panel onto the bed cap. So, and it seems to be fairly solid back here, so I'm just going to have to live with that one. I uh, uh, have to do a little more trimming right here on this. Um, 
and I'm not sure how much I'm going to take off the top of the wheel well because even with the, the steel that I'm going to run down here it gets into some pretty crusty stuff so it's probably going to be back cut here another maybe inch or two but uh, I'm going to get started cutting out the front now well it is the next day and I finally just finished this up got everything cut out everything bad anyway let me get you a good shot here yeah it seems a bit daunting but uh, that old saying how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time um, biggest problem I had was getting like yeah that triangular piece there out of this corner ended up uh, helping out a lot instead of fighting with this just drilling out these spot welds and these will be a nice place once I get the the other pieces in here to just yeah weld 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 um, logic would say to use this old fuel tank because it's plenty big but uh, I don't want to do that because it would be a real bitch to try to get it shaped just perfectly and all that and keep the gaps all nice and tight for good welds and then one mistake and pfft, you've wasted the whole piece what I'm gonna do is just patch it in with pieces and the first piece I'm gonna start with is these running boards Obviously, I'll just use one per side, but they're long enough here and wide enough here that they will just bridge from here to there nicely, and they're long enough to do the whole top. So, yeah, that's what I mean by doing it one bite at a time, and then I'll just piece it in with other pieces here and there. It, will it be pretty? Well, no, it won't, but uh, it wasn't going to be anyway. This will be much easier, and uh, these are steel running boards, not aluminum. Little little diamond plate tread will add a little bit of zazz to the old bronc too. And there's the pile of rusted metal that I cut out, along with all the rust, grinder dust, and debris that fell out of there too. Got the first piece of running board in place. Getting ready to tack it in place. Vice script on that end and a crafty usage of an old jack here holding it in place. Um, for this welding, I dug out my little Lincoln 110 jobby. It's not flux core. I have it hooked up to the, to the gas. Uh, I pretty much only use this for doing sheet metal, so therefore it sits around a lot. And it's been a couple years since I used it. I had to peel off quite a bit of wire that had rusted up on it. So if I were smart when I'm not using it, I should take that roll of wire off and put it inside. First piece is uh, finally all welded in. Kind of goes without saying, but maybe some of you that don't know about welding sheet metal, you don't just go in there and just burn it all in in a bead. It'll warp the hell out of it. So you can see I just did little inch long welds and then went and did something else, let it cool off. Honestly, I probably could have welded this more aggressively because of the thickness of this metal, but still better safe than sorry. Um, I gotta admit, I'm really digging the diamond plate, the diamond tread setup. I, I was even debating before I put that on whether to put it with the diamond tread out or in. But uh, I might just actually go to the welding shop and get enough of that to uh, finish all this up. I'm really liking the look of it, but uh, I don't know, maybe not. I'm sure it'll horrify me the cost of it, even just a small piece. But uh, the next step, I think, before I put any more in here, I'm going to square up the wheel well and get it attached right in here and then I'll decide where I'm going to start filling in the rest okay this is my snowplow bronco I think I should be able to salvage enough sheet metal out of these fender wells to patch that one up Oddly enough, every parts Bronco I have around here, and they're all rusty messes, have better wheel wells in it than that one. 
and yeah I think I mentioned it before because that one had these interior panels in here and once it started rusting out there where they normally do it just got road slop thrown up in there and it just held it in there and the moisture and it just rusted it all out but anyway this one is no big loss because as you can see the floor is in terrible shape um, it's I've kind of been wanting to just get rid of the whole back half of this anyway and either just kind of build a rudimentary flat bed just to put some weight in when I'm plowing snow and whatnot and it's uh, the uh, frame is severely rusted out on this as well so, so one of these days when that shackle completely collapses on both sides I'll have to do some repairs and this would have had to come off anyway so today's the day apparently wheel wells are harvested I managed to pretty much salvage the quarter panels, so maybe someday in the future if I want to build a Bronco skinned buggy, or if somebody else out there is building one, I got a pair of quarter panels for you. And here's the finished result with the Bronco. You can really see how badly rusted that frame is now. I mean, there's just barely anything holding that shackle on there, both sides. Uh, when the day comes that these shackles finally do break loose, I'm thinking instead of trying to repair that, I'll probably just cut the frame off right here and do some sort of a coil spring setup with a pan hard bar. Seems a bit uh, fancy pants for a snow plow rig, but uh, who knows, I do that, I might just start uh, evolving into a wheeling rig after that. Well, I changed my plan. Instead of doing the... Uh fender well first I went ahead and started filling in the front of that with uh, more running board pieces even though yeah they don't really match I'm, I'm still liking it I'm gonna have to fill in that little corner right there and as a side note when I talked earlier about warping stuff by welding on it too much I don't know if you can pick it up in there but yeah I warped it right in here I got a little little too carried away with the welding but uh, that shouldn't be a big deal I should be able to to uh, fill that in just fine with that warp in it but, uh, yeah even I could learn from my own words at times uh, when I do I do I'm gonna keep the filler neck here even though I'm not using that boat tank here but yeah in the future I'd like to put build my own tank so I'm gonna use the filler neck here so to that end I've got my 66 dug out I'll need to get some measurements from right here yeah, that's going to be boxed in here, so yeah, I won't need won't need to add much, but yeah, I'll need a little do a little bit. And got the big propane tank mounted on the back of the snowplow, Bronc. It's all about Broncos this afternoon. <laughs> Looks positively apocalyptic. Anyway, as soon as I had to get this one out, I need to go talk to one of the neighbors about a few things. So I thought I'd go ahead and let it warm up and take it for a little spin. Got the old 250 Maverick 6 in there that I adapted in a few years back. Had to make my own oil pan, uh, motor mounts, aluminum radiator. Yeah, it, even though I haven't really done much driving with other putts around here, it seems to do pretty good. Made my own uh, two barrel adapter onto the cast in intake. So I used this here big square to get this squared up at the floor and the wheel well squared up at the floor. I've got this, my first uh, sacrificial inner fender marked out and I think mostly I'm just going to be after you know, a strip of this here and just enough to get down here to where it levels out, not levels out, but straightens out again. And then I'll fill in these pieces here with just flat pieces of metal because it'll just be a lot easier that way.
it's getting there. I'm looking for just tight enough of a fit that it'll stay in there on its own, but not uh, push the wheel well here in or out. Even though it's yeah, tacked there in the center, it'll still, but uh, I think it's pretty damned close. I decided the fit was as good as it was gonna get. I tacked her in. All right, got it all welded up. I'm getting ready to grind this bead down. I think I'm just gonna leave this one alone. Uh, don't think I had too much trouble other than this part here warped a little bit, but I don't think that's really gonna be a problem. If anything, this is a learning process for me. Or a, uh, what I learned doing this side is gonna make this side a whole lot easier. Well, the lighting in here isn't very good. There it is. She's all ground down. Uh, there's a couple spots right here, down here, and right over here. I didn't quite get the pieces of sheet metal lined up perfectly, but uh, I could do something to remedy that blemish, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to paint over it. I'm not going to fool anybody that this is factory anyway, and I'm not building a show rig. That's for damn sure. This, these are a real bitch getting in there to grind these clean. They're not perfect either, but uh, yeah, they're just going to have to do. I fear that if I get in there and really try to make them perfect, I'm just going to end up gouging through the metal somewhere. But uh, I think you get the idea what I'm dealing with here. Well, it's probably been about another month since I uh, actually filmed anything on this. When I get sick of working on other things, I come back to the Bronco and then do a little bit of rust repair here. Um, as you might have noticed, maybe not, I took a little detour on my plan. Now this stuff in here and back here, that's 3 uh, I actually had to cut out stuff that I had already done. And my thought process while I was doing this, it was this piece here, I got to thinking, you know, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do for a roll bar or roll cage yet. I knew I wanted to put something in. I just didn't know if it was going to be a full six-point cage or just a simple roll bar or what and where I was going to mount it to the body, to the frame, to what. And because I'm not planning on this being a hardcore wheeler, I thought I could get by with mounting it to the body. And if you're going to mount it to the body, why not make it really strong in that area where it's going to bolt to? Now, typically, if you're going to bolt a uh, roll bar to a body, you'd sandwich the sheet metal between two plates. And well, with that 3 16 plate there, I don't have to do that. I can just bolt it right down to that plate. Now, uh, because I've got 3 16 here, here, and right there, I have it on three different planes. So it's kind of like, I don't know, for lack of a better word, a bucket that it's going to mount in. And because those plates are have spread out so far, any impact of a rollover will spread the uh, loading out over all that area. So, you know... Seeing as how I was doing rust repair anyway, this just seemed like a really good idea to get the maximum amount of strength out of mounting a roll bar to a body. All this 3 16 here, plus this tread plate, it, sure it's adding a lot of weight, but uh, you know these old Broncos, if, you, if you're if you into them, you know that there's one place they could use a little bit extra weight, and that's here in the back. Now uh, I might be redoing this actually, and uh, it just would have been a whole lot easier. These plates here, that were on the wheel wells were a real bitch to do. And it doesn't look like it'd be, yeah, just let me get over here and I can show you. Ow, bump my elbow. Because of the curve in it right here, and then it, it kind of comes out here and goes to a point uh, that was not real pleasant to do. It would have been just so much easier on this if I would have just got rid of the entire wheel well. Get back over here so I can, I got rid of that entire wheel well and just built my own out of tread plate, you know, in the same basic shape. What's that, a oh, trapezoid? I don't know what you call it. But yeah, the same basic shape, just without the rounded corners and made it all out of like, I don't know, yeah, tread plate, whatever, eighth inch, sixteenth of an inch. And that would have added a lot more strength too to mounting the uh, roll cage to those points. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know if that side is done. I might be redoing it. Now I've got this side cut out, and I'm really seriously thinking about going ahead and just getting rid of this wheel well and trying it on this side. 
because it'd just be so much easier to do and stronger if I'm going to be mounting it back there anyway. If it if I do that and it goes really well, I'll be going and cutting the driver's side back out and redoing it. And another issue I'm going to run into with this passenger side, this door jam is significantly rotten in here. So that's going to be kind of a strength issue too in, in the event of a rollover. So I'll, I think I'm probably just going to cut that off here and here and just make my own patch panel there out of a, I don't know, piece of eighth inch or something. Well, look at that. The rest of the wheel housing is gone. I think you know what that means. I've decided to go ahead and build my own wheel housing. I'm hoping it is pretty rusty along here, but I'm hoping it is solid enough that I can work with that. What's left, what will be left of the floor. I've got the uh, flange here kind of cleaned up, kind of locating the factory spot weld. There's like a six inch stretch in there where there's no spot weld. But, uh, yeah, I'm thinking that'll probably be the easiest route and the strongest. Um, on another note, the uh, B pillar here, I've decided, I think I always knew, yeah, when I got to this point, I kind of was only fooling myself. I was going to patch that. The real question was, am I going to spend the money to buy a reproduction one or just do my own patch? It's like, yeah, come on, Ron. You, a little late to be doing the right thing now. So yeah, I'll be making my own patch there. My biggest concern is this flange right here on the quarter panel. It's pretty thin in places. It might end up just taking that flange off right there and then my patch will actually, you know, weld into this corner. But uh, I think with a little bit of care and attention, I should be able to make something presentable. I'm not gonna document every little bit of this repair. It's long tedious work. Here's something that was a bit disheartening uh, as I was drilling the spot welds out. Yeah, my drill bits are cheap and dull and whatnot, but uh, it went through this whole double flange rather easily, which uh, leads me to believe that this <laughs> flange is paper thin from rust. The next step here will be to get a uh, chisel down in here and try to knock these two apart. You can see some of the spot welds are drilled through, but some of them will need a little more work. Uh, if nothing else, and if this flange is too rusty, I guess I could just extend the rear wheel well out to this next rib in the floor that seems to be a lot more solid. We shall see. All right, I think this is going to work out pretty good. Seems uh, more solid than I initially thought. Did initial cleanup with a flap wheel. I think when I do put it together, I'm just going to clamp it here, but I'll weld it on the inside right along in here. Uh, wasn't as lucky with the striker plate area, but I did manage to save a little bit of this flange. It gets a little thin in a couple spots, but uh, yeah, the metal I'll be putting in there will be thick enough that I should be able to concentrate the weld on the thicker piece and just kind of ease the weld puddle over into the thin sheet metal. I think it'll be okay. One rust repair patch in. Ah, ah, ah. Got the welder teetering there on the bedside. What could possibly go wrong? Two rust repair patches in. Ah, ah, ah. Welder hasn't fell off yet. Three rust repair panels in place. Ah, ah, ah. All right, of course, I'm still welding this one, but as I said before with this one, you don't want to get too crazy with it, you'll warp the hell out of it. I want to get this one on now because uh, it gives me a good visual frame of reference to see if I'm pretty much on target. And uh, it's off just a little bit on that far corner there, but I don't think it has anything to do with the body being out of whack. It's just, this was a repurposed running board, so it's going to have a little bit of tweakage. So uh, yeah, I wanted to get that piece in to give me a good starting point for the uh, striker post plate B pillar whatever the hell you want to call it uh, I think I pretty well got that shaped where I want it I'll throw a few more welds on the uh, running board patch and start uh, tacking that in place four rust repair patches in place ah, ah, ah. I don't have to do this anymore do I you get it the count Sesame Street you know I should say there's more than four pieces done, there's six. 
So I had to put in a little square here, and then where this jogs, I made this piece right around in there. Didn't weld too good in there because there was a lot of rust. But uh, yeah, I tried my damn just to clean it up and make it look good for reasons I can't explain because. I'm not going to be able to hide the rest of this stuff. Yeah, I just could not get up into that corner to get that cleaned up. But it looked a lot better than it did, especially right in here. It was, that was all rusted out, and it was welding pretty bad. So I just kept putting more and more on it, clean it up, putting more on it, and try to get it in somewhat decent shape. Most of this stuff's going to be, you know, somewhat hidden or not visible, but this one kind of will be. That's why probably why I wanted to clean it up. Now, if I ever wanted to put doors back on this again. It should be able to take the uh, striker plate right there, and it might actually work. The biggest problem might be getting weather stripping to fit. But who knows, I might have this thing all ganked up and the doors at the top might not ever fit again. I've tried to take measurements and get it back to where it was, but uh, I don't know. I don't, like I said, I don't plan on putting a top back on it, but that could change in the future. Or another owner could try to put a top on it. But uh, I'm going to be putting a roll bar on anyway, but it will be unboldable. But anyway, I'm just blathering on. I think I'm done with this for now. Um, what I'm going to have to do to finish this up, I need some more 316s to make the uh, angled piece here that will make the uh, fronts and back of the fender I'm going to make. And then just fill this in. But uh, anyway, I'm done with this for now. I'm going to do a little bit more work on something else, and then I'm going to call it a night, or a uh, morning, I guess. So I got this big pile of trash here I need to burn. What does that have to do with this Bronco? But uh, it's going to kind of somewhat seg into illustrating what kind of a cheap ass I can be. Here's my burn barrel. Yeah, I don't burn my trash on the ground. I'm not a total barbarian. But uh, these pipes that are in it, I got those from work a long time ago, and those were from a bacon grease line that got plugged up. See there, that grease has just turned into a hard, dried up, petrified, yeah, that was the only little passage that was actually pumping, so they cut them all out and I managed to get these pipes. Now uh, where this comes in with the Bronco, I'm going to try to use these pipes to make the front bumper for it. But in order to get all that uh, old nasty grease out of there, uh, when you heat it up, it kind of, you know, turns back into a liquid and melts and will run out of there. So that's why they're stuck in there vertically. Now this is the second time I've burned them. And after this time, I will take them out, flip them over, and wire them back in. So uh, that's what we're doing today towards the Bronco. Back in the shop, it's been a couple of weeks working on the Bronco again. Uh, been a couple of weeks since I worked on the Bronco anyway. Got uh, my first piece there. I think that's, by my measurement, that stuff is a little more than 16th of an inch. I don't know what gauge that would be. And you know what? I don't care because it's used steel and it's what I've got. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this side that, uh, I don't know what you would call that, a trapezoid right in here. And then I'll be doing this and this back with the 3 16th just like I was doing with that. Next piece is cut. Uh, I got it tacked in along the top anyway. Had a huge gap there but the bigger problem I'm seeing, if the camera's going to pick it up, but that is not square from here to the floor. Looks like I need to go in here and trim maybe Anywhere from an eighth to three sixteenths, maybe even a quarter from out of here to pull this out. Uh, this is taking more time than I thought, mostly just because this is used metal and use my plasma cutter on it. I have to grind all the rust off. Other than that, it's going pretty pretty quick. It's just, yeah, dealing with that rust. But uh, rusty metal is cheap metal for me anyway. Alright, trimmed out about an eighth of an inch right there, tacked it all back together again, and it is a perfect Mwah. I feel like I should keep on cutting pieces and tacking them in, particularly these two right here. But all this time I spent making these two pieces, right now I just feel like welding. I figure I'll probably at least just put some tacks along here so I can get those vice grips off the bottom. 
and probably then I'll uh, go ahead and cut out these side pieces here right there well there's the third piece of the wheel well housing oh man I uh, ran out of I wouldn't call it clean metal but uh, unused metal uh, I don't know I, uh, <laughs> I'll show you what's going on here I went to the local scrapper guy and got this big piece here of 3 16 and this triangular piece of it's not quite 3 16 but it's more than an eighth got both of those for $55 so yeah that's where the yellow paint came from I don't know what this was off of some sort of a piece of construction or farming equipment or something but anyway I was hoping to get the entire wheel tub done this morning but my back is killing me it just it's really eating up the time cleaning the rust off of that so I can do a good job with cutting at the plasma cutter of course you can cut with a plasma cutter over rusty metal but it, it really eats up your consumables a lot faster but uh, anyway I'm gonna get back to this tomorrow I'm gonna have to show you some uh, body work I had to do to straighten this piece out because I'm sure there's more that piece out there that yellow piece, there is not a single straight area in it other than right about here. Everything else is curved or bowed or bent. So, uh, yeah, body work. But anyway, we'll get back to this tomorrow, hopefully. All right, it's the next afternoon. It's cold. It's rainy. It's dreary out. As usual, I had other things I had to attend to this afternoon, so I don't have a lot of time, but maybe I've got enough time to knock out another piece of that uh, puzzle, as it were. Maybe get a little bit of welding done, too. I'm pretty happy with the way things are fitting up. I think I can start burning things down. Well, for this next piece, I think I'm going to give you a little a glimpse into why this is taking me so long. When you're a cheap ass like me, uh, a lot of the times uh, your savings uh, come at the cost of your time. So that's what we're going to be seeing today. And of course, not Steve wants some kibble. There you go, buddy. Now, obviously, I've got it marked out. And, you know, that's easy enough to measure what I need and mark it out. But uh, I think, as I mentioned before, a plasma cutter will cut through rusty metal. But it really plays havoc on the consumables. So I take the time to grind down where I'm going to be cutting and then I have to mark it all out again. So it's cleaned up, marked out again, and now it's time for some cutting.
Damn, if they all would have went that easy, I would have got this thing done last night. Well now, this side, the passenger side, is officially done. Other than a coat of black paint, but I'm going to wait till I get both sides done. Which does mean that I am going to go and redo this side. Now, I'm not a picky person, obviously, because if I was, I would be putting reproduction sheet metal in this. But uh, that wheel well not matching that one, that is just going to bother the hell out of me if I don't do something about it now. Well, there it is. Driver's side's done. Everything back here's done. Fully welded everywhere I could, inside, on top, underneath. Uh, you know, do me a favor, if uh, you ever run across this vehicle and poke your head underneath there to look at the welds, some of them aren't that great due to, yeah, not being able to get in there and see properly or get a good angle on the uh, welding torch, but you know, if you do see that, run across this and look at it, do me a favor, don't laugh at me too hard, you know, because I'm kind of sensitive that way. All right, and I don't want to hear any crap from you purists about how I ruined this thing. This is leaps and bounds better than it was. I'm on a budget here, you know, like most people are. And it's, like I said, it's way better than it was. It's usable now. I didn't ruin anything. I'm not whistling diesel. I don't know, late summer, more like early fall when I brought it home from the exhaust shop. Right now it is the middle of January. So yeah, I obviously didn't get to drive this last summer, but uh, we're in good shape to have it going here for summer of 2023. I need my shop. This is done enough for now. I'm going to wrap up this video with this. Come spring, I will do a roll bar, uh, front and rear bumpers with tow points, and I will most likely do something about these front floors, particularly the driver's side, but those should be pretty easy. Well, there it is all painted up. I don't know, I think I preferred it with the uh, patina look, with the rust and the old chrome and the old paint. But, too late now. Anyway, I think most of the reason I just don't like the paint is because it's so damn glossy, but I suppose after it's exposed to the elements for a while, it'll dull down. But uh, now I'm gonna put the boat tank back in it there. Get it the hell out of the shop so I can get some other stuff to work on in here instead of out in the cold. Well, I'd like to say thanks to those of you who have stuck with the project this long. I know it's took a lot longer than I thought it would, but what project doesn't? Uh, should get one more video out of it come spring. But uh, till then, uh, go out there, find yourself a project, and have fun with it. Like I'm doing. <laughs>